Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel, and we're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Now I'm going to be talking with the Seroptimus International of Gresham. Here to represent the Seroptimus, I have Naomi Wolf, who is the chair of the Public Awareness Committee and fairly new member of the Seroptimus. Thanks for being here, Naomi. And Kelly Hubbard, a high school senior and student ambassador and uh, kind of a consultant, student consultant to the Seroptimus this year. Um, I want to start out by just talking a little bit about Seroptimus International for anybody who is not familiar with them. Um, Seroptimus means best, best for, for women, women and girls. Yes, best for <laughs> women and girls. And, and like, people always ask that, what is Seroptimus? And, and um, as you know, I am also a member of the Seroptimus. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about what what some of our uh, what our mission is and, and what we try to do at Seroptimus? Absolutely. Seroptimus was founded in 1921 and one of the really exciting things about Seroptimus is we have uh, very focused programs at the local level. In Gresham we have the Live Your Dream and the Dream It Be It programs. Um, these are also international programs and the Seroptimists are exciting on an international level because we are actually a, a, a nonprofit organization and we are a um, we're a member of the United Nations and That's so right. we right. influence policy internationally um, there's about 90,000 members internationally and here locally um, we have many we have uh, close to 40 members and mm -hmm. a number of those members have been in the Seroptimist e the whole time. Like 30, 35 we're having, years, something yes, like we're that. we're having yeah. our 40th anniversary in right, 2017. Right, which is pretty amazing. So the, the women in Seroptimist are mostly um, women who are in business or um, have careers for the most part, but not solely. They're, they're women who have, you know, are, are kind of um, in a good place with themselves and want to be able to share you know, what they've learned in the world and share their generosity and their time with, with other women and, and kind of help mentor and help other women, you know, get to where they need to be, overcome obstacles and that. You know, that Absolutely. Kind of thing, you know. um, as you mentioned, I'm fairly new mm -hmm. and also new to the area. And I felt so welcome from the very first uh, exploratory um, meeting mm -hmm. that I attended. And the, the women were welcoming. A uh, very strong sense of community, very strong sense of uh, wanting to give back and also wanting to take care of the community and each other. Right. Um, I was really impressed with the professionalism and the dedication that the women in the Seroptimist of Gresham have to the community and to our sponsors. I would, I would agree with that. And speaking of, of sponsors, one of the ways they're funded is through the Teddy Bear Parade. Yes. Is that right? So this year, um, I think it was something like the 32nd. I'm not sure. Yes. But Teddy Bear Parade's been around for a long time, and people from this area really know it well. Yes. But um, that's where a lot of the funding comes from for these programs. So we had Free the Girls, which is um, where women and girls can donate their gently used brassiers. <laughs> well, when I was reading about Free the Girls, I was a little bit blown away by the information that I learned. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that they do is they're taking women who were rescued from, in most cases, uh, some sort of trafficking. Yeah, sex trafficking. And they're yeah. creating an opportunity for these women to sell the bras, create an income, be independent, mm -hmm. and keep themselves out of those situations where right. they're taken advantage of. Something I was really interested to learn was that the women who wear bras in many of these countries have a 30% less likely chance of being attacked. Yeah, I read that too, and I, that blew me away. I had no idea that that was the case because because the women that wear bras in some of the third world countries, that is um, uh, kind of a status symbol. They are considered to be a more from a wealthier family or you know yes. a family that they probably don't want to head up for you know to, to abduct their girls for human trafficking. So, um, yeah, that's a, it's sort of a safety issue right. for them. And so one of the things that people can do locally to support Free the Girls is either contact us and mm -hmm. let us know if you want to host a bin mm -hmm. at your business location or look for our bins mm -hmm. and uh, donate your washed, gently used bras. Yeah. And uh, this past year, I believe for two or three years in a row now, we've collected over 3,000 bras from the Gresham that's area. That's a lot. That's it a really lot of bras. is. <laughs> and so then once a year, we go through and we, we sort everything out and we package them up and we send them off. 
Um, since uh, the Seroptimist are a nonprofit organization, if somebody wanted to take the opportunity to support the program, and they, they could, for example, pay the postage. Oh, yeah, and yeah, we, we are always grateful for people who maybe can't join the club, but they would like to be a part of that and contribute to that. Right, and there's, there's a lot of ways. I know that um, the Live Your Dream, uh, that program has been around for a while, and that is one where we are able to give scholarships. Yes. Yeah. And so it would be somebody like Kelly here, you know, suppose she wanted, you graduated from high school and wanted to go on to college, but you were in, in circumstances where you couldn't afford it and maybe it overcome some obstacles. There's, you know, you'd apply for one of those scholarships and, and, uh, and the Live Your Dream, um, the, uh, the award luncheon is coming up on March 3rd at the Gresham Elks Lodge yes. and the public is welcome to attend that. Um, that one of the really exciting things uh, I'm, I'm a new member, so I still have the, Everything's exciting. Yes, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> still have the new member glow, but mm -hmm. interestingly, I still see that in ladies who've been around for yeah. 30 years in the club. Um, is this year, in our local chapter, we are uh, distributing three different awards, mm -hmm. totaling $7,500 to ladies who have applied and been vetted by an uh, independent group. And this is a consistent thing for our club. Mm -hmm. um, these ladies also then will have the opportunity to go on to our uh, regional and to national and have opportunities to win up to $10,000 uh, cash awards. And right. these awards are due to our sponsors. Right. Our sponsors right. make this possible. And um, we, we like to acknowledge that because we do the legwork, but they are the ones who help make it make work it with us and make it possible. Yeah. And they're changing people's lives. Yeah, in, they are. In that. One of the nice things about these awards is that the money can be used for living expenses if necessary, because we know that if somebody um, can't pay their water bill or their light bill, you know, th how are they going to study for school? So they can be used for those right. kind of things too. Uh, one of, um, or I should say, the speaker at our luncheon on March third is a previous winner of the cash That's award, Sandra. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very inspiring. I mean, this is a hardworking yeah. woman. And I've interviewed her on this show. Here. Yeah, yeah. yeah she <laughs> she's, she's, she's really outstanding. And she is not only taking care of her family, she's giving back to the community. This woman is doing so much, really talking about somebody who's come from difficulty mm -hmm. and is maximizing her contribution to her community. Right, right, that's a great thing. Which kind of brings me to the, to the thing I really want to talk about was the Dream It Be It program. And that's uh, a fairly new program for Sir Optimus. And that's why I want to bring Kelly into this conversation too, because Kelly helped us a lot in, in trying to form this. So this is, um, this is a, a program that is nationwide. Is it international or it's nationwide? It's actually, I believe it's through our federation, okay. which is just... our larger international part of our organization. Okay. Yes. And it's um, career support for, for girls. Yes. So um, w Kathy Anderson, who is the fabulous Kathy Anderson, I she love her. She's done an amazing job yeah, leading she us. Was, she was our, our chair of the, of the committee. And we're one of the very first um, clubs to actually put this, have the whole program go through from start to finish. And I think it was very successful. Um, but first, when we decided to do this, we wanted to practice. So we got a group of girls together, high school girls that uh, we wanted some input, right? So tell us a little bit about how that went, and, and, and then I want to hear from Kelly on what she thought about all this. So the program itself is very exciting. Um, it brings together many aspects from understanding your dreams, understanding yourself, what is your opportunities, what are your potentials, how do you even set goals, mm -hmm. how do you manage stress. It brings a, a whole basket of life skills together. Um, in the uh, presentation from the uh, national office, there's two ways. You can present it as an all-day conference or you can present it as a series um, for the sake of giving us all a chance to practice together. We decided to do a trial run and do an all-day conference. Um, it was very productive and the feedback from the girls was invaluable. It was also delightful. and. I think every one of us who were presenting walked away saying, first of all, those are incredible young women. I agree. And second of all, I learned so much. I learned so much about <coughs> my fellow members and about myself, and 
I was reminded or learned things that at any age you can do for yourself. That's true. So Kelly, you were one of the girls that were um, asked to come and help us out. So what did you think about going into? Did you have any idea what we were doing? <laughs> I honestly had no idea what I was walking into. <laughs> And now that you went through this one day thing, it was a really long day, wasn't it? It was pretty long, but I really enjoyed it. It was very hands-on and it was something that it put in my mind as if I want to be here in my life, I need to make these stepping stones in order to get there. So you actually did get something out of the, out of the one day. Oh yeah, absolutely. One day program. What, um, I know that we ask girls to give feedback. What, what's, what is some feedback that you would give or that you did give to some of the Seraphimus ladies about how, how it went or what you would change. Oh, I had a great time. I made friends there that I had never met before. Um, they were from all different schools, right? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'd never met any of them before. And they were just really great kids. And I got closer to them through the program and it was just a lot of fun to do. Good, good. There were some fun activities that we did, which we kind of expanded on in the, in the longer version. But, um, the, the girls were all from kind of different backgrounds, which was nice. And uh, how did you feel about it being one day? Would you, could you see it being of, of more value doing it as a longer program? I think it was a lot to take in in one day. Yeah, that's kind of what we thought too. And that's more, most of the feedback I think that we got. It was. One of the, one of the points that Kelly brings up I think is, is valuable. And that is the more we are self-aware and the more we share, we find out how much we're alike. Uh, that's right. And how much we can learn from each other. Well, and how we can support each other. And that's something that a lot of women don't ever figure out or they figure out, you know, very late in life is that really we're our own best support system for each other as, as women. So, and I think that really came out in, in the program. Um, we, you, we have some slides that um, there are pictures and, and um, different information from the program. Uh, Connie Filbert, who works for the Reynolds School District, put this all together. Um, and we have some of the pictures. So let's take a look at these. This is um, when we started this. These are some of the girls we worked with at the top. Yes. And I'm not in the bottom picture because I wasn't there that day. But this is, these are um, the ladies from Soroptimus. Yes. Um, so we had quite a large team from the Soroptimist. And during the first day, almost everybody showed up for their mm -hmm. part. Um, the way it's organized is into seven different modules. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, uh, being in this field for many years, they are extraordinarily well done. And the modules speak across age and that are very appropriate. Um, so one of the things in the first module is discovering your dreams. And this is something that we carry through out. Um, Kelly, you had uh, mentioned uh, something about uh, how it affected you to think about your dreams and the dream board. How did you like that? Um, I wasn't really 100% comfortable with sharing my dreams to the other students, but the more we got into it, the more I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do with my life. This is where I want to be. And I think that's something that we found in doing the longer version instead of the shorter one is that because those girls got to know each other even better after meeting week after week and got to know us better, they felt more comfortable sharing their dreams with well, us. One of the things that impressed me in the both groups was the amount of information that the young women had to share with each other that had it not been for this class that they were taking, they wouldn't have had the opportunity to realize that they had those resources right. for each other. Now, so exploring careers, that's something we talked about quite a bit. And uh, like I said, there were assessments, there were tests, there were little, um, I wouldn't say tests, there were... Uh, well, they go, one of the tools that they use during the career module is they send people online and there is quite a complex career assessment in giving people an idea where they might be interested in going. Mm -hmm. And uh, Renee, I believe, was the person right, who uh, Renee Laborde, yeah. who did this module. And she did a really nice job. And um, one of the things, we got back a whole bunch of our evaluations. Um, one of the things that the girls from the program said was they appreciated having professional role models. And I think Renee and all of us did a great job of showing up and being comfortable with who we are. Um, one of the, actually two of the girls from the program 
ended up saying uh, that they wanted to do their own businesses, which yeah. my, I believe that was not the case at first. So the, the program gave them the confidence, and some of them had actually already started doing the research on right. how to do I, that. I was impressed with that, yeah. So creating achievable goals, that was another. Um, and this was, this was one that I think um, all of us, the students as well as the adults, mm -hmm. really benefited from. What did you think about the, the goals part? I, I think it was really nice to like, be able to choose what goals I had to have in order to get up to what I needed. I think a lot of us don't think about that, right? I mean, you know, you, you think, oh, this would be nice to do this, it might be nice to do that, but to think about what you really want to do and then what are the steps you need to take to get there, I think that's really important. Yeah, and, and it gave us uh, the SMART formula, which is giving us, you know, achievable, realistic goals and, and how do you measure them, how right. are they attainable, how are they tangible, and people don't think about that. And that's one of the really exciting things about this is it's the life skills that people may or may not have. Right, right. Overcoming obstacles. And the lovely lady there is Connie Filbert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's She's uh, the lady who led this particular um, module and put together an amazing set of slideshows for us. Do you, uh, was there something that stood out to you? Well, I really liked Connie. Yeah. Connie really stuck in my head. Um, but she gave us, uh, if our path was to what we wanted, um, there are things that are gonna steer us off of our path, like uh, sexual predators or mm -hmm. school being difficult um, or people passing away in your family. and. You can't exactly ignore them. You can't just move around them. Right. You have to face them head on and then continue on to what your, uh, what your goal is. Path yeah. is. Good, good point. Yeah. So learning how to overcome them instead of burying that or ignoring it is a huge thing in, in finding success. Ah, who's that lady? <laughs> While we have a picture of our lovely Monica here. And of course, I'm the specialist in failure, so I got to do <laughs> me turning failure into success. And, and one, of the, one of the other people who was working with this mm -hmm. module with you was Patricia. She actually did the module, yeah. Patricia. I was a guest speaker. <laughs> you guys brought so much humor to this. And one of the things that in all of the surveys that got fed back to us was, um, the girls really appreciated having, in one words, girls, having amazing women who've been through a lot overcome their obstacles. Mm. Because a lot of times we don't think about other people having overcome stuff that we all kind of think we're alone yeah. in our stuff. My feeling is everybody in their life has something that they have to overcome at one point or another. It, some people may not have that until later in their life. Some, they're very young. I don't know about you. You probably, you yourself or family members or friends of yours have had obstacles to overcome that can oh, be yeah, overwhelming. Absolutely. I have had trouble in my last school. I recently switched over to an online school. That, that is helping me so much. Um, my mom recently passed away. Oh no, okay. but, that, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I'm trying to turn that into making it for the better. Yeah, and find the best in. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. See, that's, that's what you want. You need to, you know, people, don't always learn those skills of how to overcome things like that, or, or you may not even be overcoming it, it might be just learning how to deal with it and keep moving forward. Well, and we live in a culture where we're supposed to hide those things mm -hmm. and we're always supposed to wear our happy mask and realizing that, you know, even if people are wearing their happy mask, we all have things underneath yeah, there. It gives us does. courage to humanize each other. Yeah, and, yeah. and when you share it with others, then, then you, you see underneath that and it's, it's easier to be supportive of each other, I yes. think. Yeah. So balancing uh, your stress, that's, that's a huge thing. Balancing your stress, this was one that the girls really enjoyed. Um, and was there a, a favorite stress balancer? Oh, I really just liked them all. <laughs> they, were, they were really nice. Yeah. Um, this, was, this was one of the modules that I led. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, really delighted because everybody has heard, you know, the technique about breathing and relaxing. And mm -hmm. people responded to that. Um, one of the things that the ladies really responded to was the concept of moving meditation, mm -hmm. which is you get up and you walk around and you let your mind and your heart and your body kind of all be there at one time. And in one minute, everybody experienced a big change. It was great. I yeah. want to also thank um, Carol, Carol Nielsen, Carol Nielsen yeah. for her help with that. 
because she a lot of some yoga. Yes, yeah, that was great. How'd you like the yoga? <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, putting dreams into action. So you get through all this, so learn to overcome your stress and to set your goals and everything, and then and you need to, to get moving forward and actually put the dreams into ac action. So this is what kind of the fruition of, of all that work. Well, one of the things that we touched on in our first, um, in our one day class, and that we expanded on in our, when we take, took it out over seven modules, and I want to acknowledge, because I don't think we have yet, Rosemary Anderson High School mm -hmm. um, for allowing us to participate with their students and for the wonderful young women. They were great. Really impressive young <laughs> ladies. Uh, we, I think I walked away feeling so much hope for humanity. And to Erin, the lady who works. She's a social worker. Yes, yeah, she's a social worker there. there. Yeah. She was there at every single program, yeah. and she was great support. Um, and the girls, again, going back to the feedback, which we were very excited to get just mm -hmm, recently, mm -hmm. um, all of the girls responded very positively to having more women role models. And we had expanded and brought in some professionals. Uh, Susan Spencer from Mount Hood mm -hmm. and a couple of the other ladies were very generous with their time and, mm -hmm. and bringing in these resources. Yeah. Um, in the feedback, they wanted more resources. One of the most exciting things about the feedback that we got was consistently the young ladies are responding that they want more of this. So something that we need as Soroptimists, we'd love more women to be joining the Soroptimists and become involved in this. This is one of the things that really brought my attention to, uh, or actually you know, kind of convinced me to join the Soroptimists, because I love this program. I mean, we had Patricia who you know, had, had uh, uh, you know, one career and now has a second career, and, and Kathy who's had um, a couple different careers, uh, Renee is a retired veterinarian, I mean there's all these, from all different walks of life, and, and being able to share what you've learned throughout your life with these girls, and, and, so, and really I think every one of us agreed that we got way more out of it than they probably got out of it, even though they said they did, it was, it was very powerful. It, working with that group of women mm -hmm. was life changing because they are all so on top of it and all in their their own way they bring beautiful pieces that kind of miraculously made this happen yeah. with a lot of work yet they were women who had gone through a lot of stuff so one of the other ways let's say for example there are men out there and men can join Seroptimus mm -hmm. by the way um, and if there are men out there or restaurant owners or people who would like to support the program um, yet they don't feel inclined to be joiners mm -hmm, of the club, mm -hmm. there are many ways you can support us. Um, we are actively asking for people who would be willing to donate a meal for we, the girls. We provide food for them while we're there. We provide a whole meal for the, for the girls. And that has been very appreciated by them. It's <laughs> yes, always yeah. welcome. Everybody likes food, right? Um, we are looking also for people who might want to share it or for people who, who could just show up for one or two of the modules and, and be there in some way to support. Right, and there's, there's different ways, and they should just contact us um, if they are interested in Absolutely. doing that. Yeah, well, so, and I'm always looking for sponsors for the Teddy Bear Parade that also supports that in, in other ways, so. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and Rosemary Anderson High School. That was terrific, we're gonna do our, our second um, series of modules at Rosemary Anderson again. They, they were wonderful and so, um, but in the future we may be expanding it to other schools as well. Yes, I, I, we would like very much to do that. Um, there seems to be interest. Would you say that people your age are interested in this? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you think other okay. girls would benefit from, from something like this? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Personally, I'd like to see it in every high school and yeah. have it have a boys version too because I have a son. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, one of the things uh, that I noticed, we as the Soroptimist recently had our area meeting mm -hmm. and I sat next to the president of, I believe it was Mount Hood or Mount Adams chapter? No, Adams, Mount Adams, yeah. Adams chapter. Yeah. And their uh, club had also taken an active role. They have a number of educators in their club mm -hmm. and they had a great response. Um, when we were at um, our regional meeting a couple of months ago, uh, some of the ladies were a little hesitant. They were saying, how do I qualify for this? How can I connect with these girls? I don't think I would connect with these girls. There was right. a lot of that hesitation. And none of us were trained um, 
Uh, well, Connie is a, works in education, but she's not an educator per se. Right, right. Do you feel like we were connecting and, and available? Oh, yeah. Um, the way that they connected, they shared their own stories, the women of the... Yeah, yeah. It, it was, I felt connected to everybody in the room. Yeah, you know, when I, I was doing the um, fa overcoming failure, I, I shared a story that I hardly have ever shared with anybody because I just felt compelled to because these girls, I felt like they've given me their personal stories. I owe it to them to share mine. And it was, you know, it was really hard, you know, but I, they did it. By golly, I should be able to do it too. So it was, um, yeah. And, and one of the comments that caught my attention in the reviews was, that these people really talked to us and wanted to hear us. In mm -hmm. other words, the we women cared. cared. We cared, genuinely cared, yeah. I think that's really what it boils down to. If you genuinely care about somebody, your skill set is purely secondary. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So we're just about out of time. Um, any last words, anything you need, to, you wanna share? I think it's a brilliant program. <laughs> I think it you. should be in every school. Right, well thank you very much Kelly. Thank you for helping us being our student consultant, student ambassador, and thank you Naomi, and um, appreciate you stepping up and being head of our PR department for, for Sir Optimus. Um, I'm looking forward to the next the next uh, next season of modules with the, um, with the I, girls. So. I am too, and um, based on the, the trail we've already blazed, reaching a lot more people with right. it. So thank right. you. you. Thank bet. you for having us. You bet. Thanks so much for watching Community Hotline tonight. If you are interested in getting more information about the Seroptimus, about any of their programs, be sure to go ahead and check us out on the website. We'd love to answer any questions and hear from you. So, And feel free to come to our uh, Live Your Dream Luncheon coming up on March 3rd. I'm Monica Weisel. This has been Community Hotline. What local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard.